Imagine not being able to read the paper because your hands were shaking. Imagine not being able to read newsprint as your world faded to black. The National Federation of the Blind, Newsline Indiana. With your host, Lee Martin, and co-host, Florence Myers McSwine. We want to welcome you to the National Federation of the Blind Newsline Indiana program. We want to thank you for returning and watching our program on a regular basis. Um, Florence, I enjoy all the comments that we receive and uh, the individuals that are introduced to this new service of the National Federation of the Blind, Newsline. Uh, it provides individuals that are blind, visually impaired, uh, those that are print challenged, even the, um, those with some certain forms of dyslexia, and even individuals that are deaf blind can now utilize this free service. It is a free service that allows individuals to read over 460 newspapers, whether it's your local newspapers or uh, national newspapers, international newspapers, uh, Target and Walmart circulars, job listings, TV guide listings, just the plethora of uh, publications that you can read, including magazines. So, um, Florence, you want to describe to them, uh, you know, the devices that we utilize and some of the magazines. I certainly will, Lee. Uh, now, I actually prefer using my iPhone uh, to access NFE Newsline, but you can access the service using your landline phone, your mobile phone, your computer, Victor Reader Stream, as well as the digital player from the Talking Book and Braille Library. Now, there are various magazines. I'm going to start with AARP um, because I am a senior, and that's one of the magazines that I do use, as well as um, Best Recipes. There's magazines for people that are diabetic, diabetic forecasts, um, getting ideals and tips on um, devices and things that they can use um, to control and, um, their diabetes and other information as well. There's WebMD. There is Stone Soup for Children, which is another one of my favorites, and Guy Post Magazines, which is a very inspirational magazine, which has been out for years. Um, there's also um, magazines for people who are, um, you know, um, into fitness. Shape Magazine is one. And there's magazines for families, such as Family Circle and um, Family Fun. So again, um, the service, as Lee mentioned, is free. So Lee? Yes, and free is a key word. So we will, um, want you to watch the screen and, and, and listen, and um, the information will be scrolling across, and you'll hear some of uh, the ways to contact us uh, to access this free service. Uh, once again, I love using it, and by the time this program airs, you will be able to access NFB Newsline on Amazon Echo. So we are very excited about that, and um, uh, here in the future, we will demonstrate that to you. So we're gonna take a pause, and we'll be right back. I'm Danny Wayne Beamer, Program Manager of the Elder Blind Program at the Will Center in Terre Haute, Indiana. I introduced the NFB Newsline to seniors in 13 southwestern counties in Indiana. I also utilize the NFB Newsline for my radio station public affairs shows. The NFB Newsline. Experience it today. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. We are If you or someone you know is visually impaired or print challenged, the National Federation of the Blind has a resource you need. I use NFB Newsline when reading Hammond Northwest Times. Using NFB Newsline, I read the Christian Science Magazine. Dad, you read your Lucy Limbaugh's too. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. Live the life you want. Read NFB Newsline. It's free.
Welcome back to the National Federation of the Blind Newsline, Indiana. And I'd like to introduce today's guest, Mr. Lance Farnell. And Lance, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show, Lance. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Well, you know, we always like to have great guests. And I know that you are a great guest because you are doing great things. So uh, you are totally blind? I have light perception. You have light I perception. can see a bit of shadow here and there, but not much. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what eye condition did you have um, prior to losing all your, this, uh, your sight? It's referred to as Labor's Hereditary Optic Neuropathy, or if you like acronyms, L-H-O-N. It is a um, pretty rare condition. It's a hereditary mitochondrial disease, which damages the optic nerves. It took about six months for me to lose most of, of my vision. Now, um, you said it took six months. Now, um, how long has it been since you were diagnosed? I was diagnosed in January of 2016. Okay, so it went pretty quick. It did, it happened pretty quick. Mm. Now, um, uh, what did you do prior to um, uh, losing your sight? Well, for you know, my career, I um, was uh, involved in photography and video production for most of my life. I started here in Indianapolis as, as a kid. I mean, my dad gave me a job uh, uh, in the dark room and, and duplicating audio cassettes and things like that and just eventually picked up a camera uh, in my mid-teens and started shooting pictures and um, roaming around Indiana and shooting and um, eventually uh, started shooting video commercially um, and uh, moved to Texas in 92 and um, made my name as a uh, director of photography down there for a good number of years. But my, my passion was always landscape photography. I loved to hike and camp and uh, explore the outdoors and the national parks, national forests all over the country and, and shoot pictures while I did that. That was uh, what I loved to do. and and I will always be grateful for uh, those experiences. Now, um, then as though we're talking about human interest on this particular show with you, um, the impact of having sight, as I had for 48 years prior to losing my sight, and um, I know the impact on me and you really using your eyes and seeing all the beauty and all the things that a, a, a sharp eye a photographer uh, would, would see, you know. Um, uh, share with us the, um, the, the initial impact on uh, when you first heard you was going to lose your sight. Well, I will take you back to a doctor's office where I was... Um, it took a good part, the better part of six months for them to figure out what was wrong with me. And when the doctor finally basically said, well, you have this condition and it's not curable, so you're gonna be blind for the rest of your life. So he had, you know, with the bedside manner of a warthog, it was uh, just wonderful. And I was angry at first. I you know, had a clipboard in my hand with some of the medical paperwork on it and threw it down on the floor. And, that lasted for about 10 minutes. And then I just went into damage control. And um, I have not spent a lot of time um, pondering the past or lamenting about what I have lost. Um, I talk about this sometimes. I don't understand that because I haven't always been the most positive person. Um, I certainly miss going in the woods or into the desert or um, these places alone and being able to do what I did. But um, I believe that there are built-in defense mechanisms, if that's what you want to call them, mm -hmm. that enable us to get through something like this. Um, I don't understand it. 
um, overall, yeah, you know, it, it's 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 a drag. But what do you do? Um, you just keep on moving. Keep on moving. Now, um, if you could recall, and just for my, uh, I'm trying to interpret this uh, through my visual mind. Um, what, what would you say was one of the most uh, interesting uh, uh, scenes or pictures that you had taken that kind of st stays in your, in, your, in, in your mind now? That's really tough. Um, but I think to answer it simply, it's the one I'm thinking about right now. Um, I don't know why that is, but there was a May afternoon in 1997, I believe it was, where I was on my way driving back from Corpus Christi, Texas to Houston, and it was a thunderstorm that was developing. And I was shooting a shot of a field of yellow wildflowers with mesquite trees kind of mixed in amongst those flowers. And so this storm was developing, and I'm out there with a metal tripod. Um, shooting these, you know, shooting pictures, and I'm like, well, I wonder if I could get some of that daytime lightning in, in some of these frames. And so I'm standing out there with my hand on a cable release in a lightning storm. So um, one of those shots out of 30 um, showed a very distinct clear bolt of lightning coming down behind one of those mesquite trees. That's, that's just the shot I'm thinking about right now. Mm -hmm. um, there were so many experiences and things I got to see that um, it's hard, and, and I'm grateful for every single one of them. Mm -hmm. they, they helped to shape me into who I am today, and if I had not been able to spend the times out in those places, I'm not sure if I would have been able to walk through losing my vision, you know, the way I'm walking through it today. I. I'd like, I'm not saying I'm, I'm doing this with a lot of grace, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I knock stuff over, I run into things. That's my new hobby. But uh, I had, you know, I lost my vision at 48 too, Lee, and that's, mm -hmm. you know, so I had, I had 48 good years, and I'm just trying to keep on the sunny side today and, uh, you know, keep gratitude in the forefront. Mm -hmm. And, you know, isn't this something I, you know, I hear a lot of people um, say, you know, I just wouldn't know what to do if I lost my vision. But the thing is, is that, yes, there is a um, internal thing on the inside of us that says keep it moving. You know, it's something that says um, you can get through this. Everybody's coping with something and you can get through this. And um, it's not it's not saying get over it because it, it's, it's that's something that we just we live with. But. You know, Lance, you are doing a lot of things, and um, I know that um, one of the things that I'm, you know, kind of thinking about is you've returned to school. So I guess that's something that we might talk about a little later, perhaps. Lee? Yeah, we're going to talk about uh, Lance's uh, uh, From Trials to Triumphs here. Yes. And uh, we'll be right back, so stay tuned. I'm not able to read regular newspapers, and I'm not able to keep up with obituaries. I've been a homemaker all of my life, but since my vision has failed, I wish I could read my favorite magazine. Have you heard of the NFB Newsline? Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. Subscribe free to NFB Newsline today. As I've traveled the nation, I read NFB Newsline. I live in Valparaiso, Indiana, and I listen to my local news on NFB Newsline. As a student, I enjoy reading current events on NFB Newsline. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. Subscribe free to NFB Newsline today.
want to welcome you back to the National Federation of the Blind Newsline Indiana program. And we're here today with uh, Mr. Lance Furnell. And Lance is sharing quite a bit of information with us, overcoming uh, obstacles and uh, from trials to triumph. So Lance, um, you were talking about you can continue to hike and you can continue to do some of the other exploratory things that you've done, uh, even though you've lost your sight and you hadn't let it hold you back. So at this current point in time, um, uh, you're attending um, IUP, um, or is that Ivy Tech? Ivy Tech. Okay, and you know, uh, tell us a little bit, how did you, you know, um, prepare yourself uh, to get to the point to where you could um, uh, attend Ivy Tech? Well, it's been uh, a journey of learning to use screen reading software with a computer, mainly. Um, I was a visual typer, so that was, uh, I paid a hefty price for that. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but just learning the keyboard and learning how to use screen reading software um, to operate a computer. And um, just now finishing up my first semester, right now, and so the first two classes I took were online courses, and uh, it's the, the, the good thing about it is the process has forced me to become a better screen reader user and, and a better non-visual computer user. Um, I was never a great high school student, um, which is an understatement, but um, so I just have a strong desire to um, find a way to, uh, to serve other than uh, just furthering my own um, things these days. Um, so I'm uh, seeking a degree uh, in sustainable policy and management. Um, I'll move on to IUPUI uh, when the time is right. Okay. So um, in order to get to this particular point, did you, um, you, you went through Bosma Enterprises uh, for training, rehabilitation training? I did. I spent about six months in Bosma's uh, program and can't say enough about that, um, that process. Um, the folks at Bosma were great and it's really, um, when you go there, it's a process of, of letting, uh, letting everyone know what you need and, and being your own advocate. But uh, they, do, they do such a great job at working with you and, and customizing the whole the whole experience to uh, to what you want to do, you know that that was just really essential in me getting back out into um, getting into a situation where I'm around other people, other like-minded people trying to achieve some similar things. Um, so it was um, very interesting and uh, absolutely essential. So um, your transition back to independence then. Absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, you know, independence in the blind community is, is, is talked about a lot. And, you know, my take on it is, yes, I want to be as independent as I can. Mm -hmm. um, I want to do everything that I can. And, and I often find myself asking, you know, can I do this? Should I be doing it? Or is it impractical? Now, I'm not going to pursue independence at the, per, at the expense of practicality. Mm -hmm. You know, there are certain things that I can struggle for six hours to try and figure out how to do on my own, or I can ask somebody to, with sight to look at the computer screen or whatever it may be and, oh, no, just do this. And in an instant or a matter of 15 minutes. So, you know, we, we have to ask. We have to, we, you know, this is, this is the way my life has changed, you know. Mm -hmm. And even, even in your former life with sight, uh, you still have to use practicality, you know, to get things done. And you still have to ask individuals, you know, we all have to at some point in time, whether you have sight or whether you don't have it, you know. So um, as you pursue uh, your, your goal right now, um, um, what are some of your other interests? 
Well, you know, I told, uh, talked about earlier that, you know, my, my passion before was photography, so I still love to hike and camp and backpack. I've been able to uh, spend some time out in the backcountry in um, Yellowstone and Big Bend National Park in Texas, and I've hiked in Alaska and um, a number of states, and uh, that's been a, a process of, of just patience as far as um, how to physically uh, maneuver on different types of terrain. Um, I love sports, um, love keeping track of sports, love music, I go to a lot of concerts, I love, uh, love blues music, um, just, uh, you know, it's still something that, that really moves me is, is music, I, I, I love, uh, love it. Well, speaking of music, take me right to where I want to be right now. Um, I heard you play um, harmonica. <laughs> Um, at one of Bosma's graduations. Um, would you happen to have that my harmonica with you today, Lance? Why, it's funny you ask, Florence. As a matter of fact, I do. <laughs> okay, well, you, um, you want to play a short little uh, bit of the harmonica for us? Sure, always glad to. Okay, and I'm glad to listen. <laughs> That's blues. That's Lance Down Home Blues. <laughs> yeah, you can always say Lance will make you dance, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you. You know, thank you for that. Uh, what was that rendition of? That was just um, straight out of the depths of my brain. So mm -hmm. it's a rendition of some of of uh, yeah, that was custom right there for you. Mm -hmm. So that was wow, it. Um, yeah, I'm making that up as I go along. Yeah, scary as scary as that is. Yeah, I tell you like what, that. That, that, uh, I had to copyright that real quick. <laughs> 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 so you um, you also are a member of the National Federation of the Blind? Absolutely. Okay, and that's another great advocacy group there, and uh, which, um, uh, like we said, one of the programs that we uh, talk about is the new NFB Newsline and a lot of the other... Uh, um, initiatives that we have. Um, uh, we do have uh, individuals such as yourself that are musically inclined. Um, uh, we address a lot of issues that uh, you're studying for right now to be great as an advocate. Uh, Florence is in the, right now attending the uh, Governor's Council for People with Disabilities uh, Policy and Partners Making. Uh, it might be something you want to take a look at a little later on as well. Mm -hmm. You know. So uh, we're going to take a short pause, and we'll be right back uh, with um, Lance uh, that can make you dance. The National Federation of the Blind knows that blindness is not the characteristic that defines you or your future. Every day we raise the expectations of blind people because low expectations create obstacles between blind people and our dreams. You can live the life you want. Blindness is not what holds you back. I am a blind vendor, and one of the things that I truly miss is reading Vending Times magazine. Hoosiers can hear Indiana Magazine's circulars, national magazines, and information from across the globe. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. It is a fantastic service. Subscribe free to NFB Newsline today. Well, we're back at the National Federation of the Blind Newsline Indiana show, and Lance Farnell is our guest, has been our guest, and Lance, uh, we've talked about some interesting things, and you were emphasizing that you wanted everyone to know that you can still live the life you want. So you have some things that you would like to say. 
Well, I think I think we all know that uh, you know blind folks do a lot of amazing things. I know I've been you know really educated in, in the community over the last few years, and and especially over the last year. Um, you know, and and the things we can do and the things we can pursue are um, many and varied. You know, so there there really are not that li many limitations. Um, you know, I think um, the thing that doesn't get talked about a lot is, um, you know, when, when something like this happens, I mean, losing one's vision, no matter what you did for a living, what your pursuits were before, it's, it's dramatic, it's, um, it's all-encompassing, it is, um, you know, definitely probably the most significant thing that's happened to me in my life as far as uh, something, a hurdle to, to to uh, overcome, but but there are advantages to this thing, and they are. Uh, when I meet people today, when I met Florence and Lee, when I met y'all, I did not judge you by what you looked like. It is the most wonderful thing. I don't judge anybody by what they look like, and I have found that to be such a freeing. Uh, life-changing experience. Um, I make, I have made the best friends I've ever had during the last few years. It has, this process has literally just uh, helped me to rejoin the human race. So in a lot of ways, I have really come of age as a human being due to this. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to going to sit here today and tell you I'm grateful that I lost my sight. If I could get it back, I'd get it back. But if I ever did get it back, it would come with great responsibility because of the things I've learned. So, you know, there, there, there is a way to keep on the sunny side no matter what. Yes, and staying on the sunny side because we know the NASA, the National Federation of the Blind, we know that blindness is not the characteristic that defines you. And we have just a few seconds left in our show. And um, I'd like for you to take us out, Lance, with a, a, a little rendition that you come up with in your mind. And thank you very much for joining us on the show today. The National Federation of the Blind, Newsline, Indiana. For more information, go to nfb-in.org or call 855-963-6476. That's 855-963-6476. The National Federation of the Blind encourages you to live the life you want. <laughs>